In this week, we have been talking about education for sustainable development. So this connects to the discussion that we had last week about the kinds of schools and curricula that students might need for today's world and uh, questions related to that. What should all students learn about or how individualized uh, to individual students' interests or strengths should education be? These are also kinds of questions that the idea of education for sustainable development requires us to engage. Education for Sustainable Development, or short ESD, is, among others, also a program that has been uh, promoted by the UNESCO. And here's a quote that summarizes what the idea of ESD is about. It aims to empower learners of all ages with the knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes to address the interconnected global challenges we are facing, including climate change, environmental degradation, loss of biodiversity, poverty and inequality. So as we can see, we're facing a lot of different challenges from local to global levels that span ecological challenges as well as social and economic challenges. So the big question is what kinds of knowledge, skills, values and attitudes would achieve this challenging aim? What kind of competencies would students need that, that empower them to contribute to a sustainable future? We had a short discussion to explore some of our ideas, what kinds of knowledge, skills, values, attitudes this might entail. In general, there's also quite a range of different competency or learning goals frameworks around the world that exist to answer this question. Here are just a few listed. In this module, we will be especially looking at these following competencies, which you can also look at and a couple more as well in this ESD competencies overview document. So it's things like systems thinking, um, cooperation competency, future thinking competency, and so on. Now, the thing is that we can also think of these competencies as kinds of human behaviors that we want to cultivate in ourselves, but also in others, including in students. So these are things that we humans are able, capable of doing, and we want to understand how can we better help develop these, these kinds of behaviors and to also understand what are, what are some yeah, factors that make it maybe difficult for us to have those competencies. There's also many other 21st century competency frameworks around. Here's another example from the OECD that has been published recently, their new learning compass for 2030, which also tries to yeah, provide a framework for how to think about the kinds of competencies and knowledge, skills, attitudes that students need for, yeah, for the future regarding how the world is now in the 21st century compared to how it was in the last centuries. One issue that we started to discuss as well is the idea of curriculum overload challenge that has been discussed in this document also by, by the OECD. So it's the idea that because humanity accumulates more and more knowledge over time, through science, just in technologies. The challenge then is that curricula tend to get more and more crowded as more and more topics and content starts to get added into it. And so the challenge is though that teaching and learning more stuff does not necessarily lead to better learning. So it's kind of like um, superficially covering a lot of content does not necessarily lead to students developing skills and competencies. And additionally, the situation causes stress and demotivates students and teachers. So one challenge is how can we then overcome this curriculum overload challenge in the 21st century? Another challenge is that of exponential change and uncertainty. So we are now living in a time of unprecedented changes. 
if we look at here these graphs, there's socioeconomic trends that are accelerating more and more. And there's also on the ecological level trends of the Earth system that are more and more accelerating. And so students will have to navigate a world and solve problems that we cannot even conceive of right now. We don't really know what will happen in 20 years exactly, what kind of challenges might there exist. And so an, another question is how can education prepare students for this? What should education look like if student, if we're not even sure what kind of world our students will be living in when they grow up? So this was another discussion that we had, how could education address both the curriculum overload challenge and the challenges of preparing our students for a future we don't even know yet. One kind of approach that we think um, and that we are using because it seems useful to overcome these challenges is teaching for conceptual understanding. And to make this more clear what this means, we had a little group work where we had you compare, for example, the challenge of COVID-19 and the challenge of climate change. These are on the surface very different problems involving different kind of uh, facts. But at the same time, we can try to look at them and, and identify commonalities or similarities even though they are different on the surface, they might be um, entailing similar kinds of factors and, and yeah, causal relationships. And so this kind of um, comparison was then used to help us understand why might it be also be important for sustainability education to focus on core concepts and not just topics. So the point is, the idea is that, in fact, most, sustain most sustainability challenges, and actually the world in general, have a similar underlying structure made up, of, uh, made up of concepts and principles. So if we're looking at the topic level, maybe we would be learning about COVID-19. We would be learning a lot of facts maybe about COVID. Then in another unit, we might be learning about climate change also learning a lot of facts about climate change. But the challenge here is that we can't use our understanding of COVID if we're just looking at the facts to help us unlock a new situation like climate change. For example, knowing about the rate of infections in a country doesn't really help us understand the percentage of renewable energy, energy use in a country. And to improve this, we can move up to the level of concepts, which are then transferable, meaning, for example, in both COVID-19 and climate change, we might be dealing with the role of science and innovation, or we might be looking at what's the role of social inequality in, in both of these uh, challenges, or we might be looking at what kinds of human behaviors um, are maybe, maybe causing those challenges, but also might be solutions to these challenges, or what's the role of cooperation in overcoming these challenges, and so on. So in this way, if we learn about one topic and we understand the role of science and innovation in this topic, we can then better use our understanding to look at a new situation where science and innovation might also play a role. And then if we go even higher, we can even look at more transferable uh, principles, which kind of connect uh, these concepts into more general relationships. Here are just some examples, but depending on the subject, um, there might be different kinds of kinds of principles that play a role. Here, as an example, um, an article that looked at behavioral science concepts that play a role in understanding the COVID-19 pandemic. So we see here that there's different kinds of behavioral concepts in there. For example, how do people trust uh, leadership, the government, and so on? How they, who do they listen to? What's the role of social inequality? And so on. How do people make decisions? So these are all behavioral concepts that in this case 
play a role in how we, how we respond to COVID-19. But in fact, the same concepts can also be applied to when we try to understand our responses to climate change and why it might be a challenge. So this is just one example to, to show that these kinds of concepts, we can use them to look at different kinds of sustainability problems. And so this is why we think conceptual understanding, focusing on that, uh, can play a very important role in education for sustainable development. And so as educators, we need to provide students with the opportunity to uncover this structure, this common structure that many sustainability challenges have in common. And so when they are exploring particular topics or phenomena, we want to help them to find, uncover this structure and that they then can critically transfer the understanding to new phenomena. Again, because the problem is, if we're just saying on the level of facts and topics, that does not really transfer to new phenomena. We cannot use our understanding of the facts of one topic to understand a new topic. On the other hand, if we have information that is more structured because into concepts and relationships, that actually makes it easier to remember isolated facts. And so we will be using especially um, educational approaches informed by these educators, Julie Stern and colleagues, especially um, yeah, presented in these books, which is basically a pedagogical approach for how we design unit and lessons around key concepts, understanding skills and essential questions that guide um, activities. And so the goal is for students to develop their understandings of concepts and principles by guiding them through several examples or topics, which then help students uncover and refine their understanding. There's also a strong role of metaphors and analogies as one tool to help abstract to general principles. And the idea is finally also that we want to establish a culture of a thinking classroom, meaning that it's not about getting the right answer necessarily, but really, um, and, and, and you know, learning a lot of facts about something, but more about continuously reflecting and questioning our understanding. And uh, in terms of assessment, the emphasis is also more on so-called formative assessment, where it's about looking at our progress over time rather than getting the right answer. And again, there are then several ways that this, uh, this can be done. And so overall, the aim is that we foster metacognition and uh, self-directed learning in students by regularly prompting students to reflect on their own understanding, make connections to their own lives and transfer to new phenomena of interest. So we want to, we want to help students understand that learning is not about passing a test or road learning particular definitions or facts, but it is about regularly reflecting on what we understand and looking for connections. And so we think that this approach of teaching for conceptual understanding is really one way to provide both curriculum structure, because we are focusing, we're wanting students to focus on particular concepts, and at the same time, allowing students freedom to choose their own topics to learn about. Because if we focus on concepts uh, that span several topics, we can allow students some freedom to decide which topic they might want to learn about in order to apply these general concepts and principles. Here's an example of one approach that we will also be using in this module again informed by, by this book. It's basically just a simple model to help us also as educators and as students understand what we're actually doing in the classroom. It's the learning transfer mental model and it involves three steps. They're not to be thought of as a linear thing. We can jump a little bit around during a unit, but it's helpful to just think about these three steps. So in the first steps, it's about helping students acquire an understanding of, of individual concepts. So we help students do this by letting them explore what are the critical characteristics of a particular concept. Or for example, by letting them ex uh, reflect on what do they already know about it or think about it, 
or by having them look at examples and non-examples of, of the concept. So in this module, in the following week, we will, we will be looking at three very overarching concepts, evolution, behavior, and sustainability. And we will be using methods um, that help us acquire some more complex understanding of the concepts. In the second step, we would help students connect these concepts into relationships, which are then like principles about how the world works. And for this, we can give students conceptual questions that guide them in exploring these relationships in particular situations. For example, one question that we want to explore in this module is how does human behavior impact sustainability? So as you see, we have connected two concepts, behavior and sustainability into a relationship. And we want to look at different situations that help us answer this very broad question. And then in the third step, we continue to explore this relationship and transfer our understanding to different kinds of situations by just looking at more and more um, topics where we can, where this kind of concept and this relationship applies. We might also be adding new concepts in this process. Um, for example, we might be looking at how does human behavior impact sustainability in the COVID-19 pandemic or in climate change or in mental health and so on and so on. These are all different topics, but at the same time, they are about uncovering this very broad, these relationships between human behavior and sustainability.